just quickly wanted to say, if you gave Big back its £425 million that Labour stole from it, we solve a lot of uh, small charities' financial problems at the moment. That's a, but that's not my question. Andrew, I'll be paid. Um, our charity commission is seen as an exemplar of um, charity regulation around the world. And just when our sector needs a very strong regulator that commands public trust and confidence, um, we now have a charity commission that does not have the resources it needs to do its job. Does the panel agree that a 30% cut to the charity commission's budget was a terrible mistake? Uh, Lord Hodgson, I think the Charity Commission and regulation is within the purview of your review. Um, what would you like to say about that question? Well, if I was a coward, I'd say the report comes out in July. <laughs> uh, clear, clearly... You've never been known as a coward, right? <laughs> uh, clearly, um, we've, we've obviously had a lot of evidence from around the country, from the questionnaires, from the calls for evidence... Um, and we are assessing the same. The question is about focusing resources on where it is most needed um, and whether or not that will prove possible uh, in the brave new world. I wouldn't like to foreshadow at this stage and I accept that you're going to think that's a pretty, pretty slovenly answer. <laughs> um, Stuart Etherington, what do you think about well, the I mean, Charity Commission? I think two things, really. I mean, I think one is uh, public trust and confidence is absolutely essential to the vitality of this sector. Uh, that's, I think, driven by two things. The inherent desire to engage in good practice, uh, which is important in the sector, which is the job of infrastructure organisations, if you like, to encourage good practice. But also it requires good and effective regulation uh, because that... You know, the, the Charity Commission, well, the error that the Charity Commission have made, I think, historically, is that they are not there to represent the interests of the voluntary sector or advance the interests of the voluntary sector. They are there to represent the public interest in relation to charities. Uh, and I think they got very confused about whether or not they were there to represent the public interest or whether they were there to advance the cause of uh, charities. I think... They clearly need the, an effective level of resource in order to protect the public interest. And I think that's the strategic framework that needs to be there. But in order to do that effectively, I think they have to be focused on what their core task is. And we don't do them any favours by saying they've got to be friends to us all the time. They're there to represent the public interest, not the sector's interest. And, and once, you, once you do that, you say, OK, what level of resource do you need to if, do that effectively? Uh, and you've got to deal with relative levels of risk, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I, I think they've suffered a big cut. Everybody has suffered a big cut. I think the debate between where good practice and advice lies and where protecting the public interest by effective regulation lies is actually quite a healthy one. Now, I think all I, all I would add um, to that is that I think the sort of cut to the Charity Commission and Lord Hodgson's review is the sort of case of the tail wagging the dog. We should have had the review before the, before the cut. And, um, you know, I think that's um, one of the sort of problems that the sector now has um, to deal with in terms of, as Stuart, said, Stuart says, making sure that the public interest is properly um, protected going forward. OK. Uh, it's been and very... It's worthwhile saying one yes. thing. That when people say the Charity Commission needs to be an effective regulator, there are 180,000 registered charities. There are probably as many, again, of accepted, exempt uh, charities and charities under the radar. So we are talking about an institution that would have to receive probably, currently would receive 750 sets of accounts every day if they were doing just the regulated charities, those that are on the radar, and double that number if they were trying to do the whole sector. And it is hard to conceive of any organisation that could look at, examine and give public trust and confidence to 1,500 sets of accounts every single working day, no matter what the economic background was. <laughs>